it's Natasha and thank you so much for joining me today. We are going to be creating a card today and I'm going to share with you the six budget friendly top tips for kind of stepping up your card making. Now as I said these are budget friendly so the first one here which I have shared in previous videos but it is make your own stamps from dies that you already have in your stash you just need some fun foam this is the three millimeter thick fun foam and just run it through your die cutting machine one time only don't run it back through because that will distort the shape and the foam kind of stretches as it goes through and you'll kind of end up recutting the foam again so just run it through one time and it will cut perfectly well I use some adhesive like some double sided adhesive uh, to stick these onto my blocks or some removable adhesive stick it onto my little acrylic blocks and then I'm going to be stamping here using some rosy cheeks from the Simon Hurley inks um, this is just a dye ink and all I do is just use it like a normal stamp I'm going to dip it into the ink pad and then just cover the front of my card panel here now this is a four and a quarter by five and a half inch card panel and I think somewhere during this process I end up cutting this down to four by five and a quarter now here I have a little square of Gina K masking paper. This is my favorite masking paper and I'm just going to take the stamp whilst I have it and stamp one of them on that little square there. This masking paper is fantastic because it holds up to so much ink and it doesn't bleed through which is really important to me. So my second tip for uh, card making and kind of stepping it up, taking it to the next level without having kind of all the fancy layered stamp sets and all of those sorts of things is add masking so just with some masking paper I have cut out that flower that we stamped I'm going to add this over top here and you can see that I had to cut into it obviously to cut out the shape so I'm also going to add a little bit of low tech tape just to kind of close up that little cut there and then all I'm going to do is take a sort of different shade here this is going to be the triple berry it's a little bit purple and a finger dauber and then I'm going to add some shading to the outside of these flowers now again I want to stress in this video that you do not have to do all of these steps on every single card <laughs> I am creating a card today to show you these steps however if you want to do one or two of these on your card then that is great you don't have to do all six on every card <laughs> so these are just ideas so you can see what a difference it makes I'm going to speed through the rest of them here and you can see that it just doesn't make them look quite so flat that we've just stamped one color now definitely what you could do is um, use kind of a rocking method and when you are stamping it and kind of get two different colored inks on one stamp when you're stamping it but honestly I find this way just as quick and a little bit less messy now using a couple more green inks this is overzealous and later gator by the same Simon Hurley inks and we are going to use the inside of that mask that we cut out earlier so we're using both parts of the mask that we cut and we are just going to cover up the flower that we stamped and then this is how we are going to put in the leaves and it makes it look like the flower is in front of the leaves now this is the technique here that I was talking about where you can kind of dip your stamp into two different colored inks and get a little bit of each color on your stamp and you kind of rock it um, but whichever again whichever one kind of works best for you or you find the easiest so just make sure that you press down nice and hard with your stamps so that you won't get that little shadow when you um, are stamping over top of your mask when you are cutting masks it's quite good to just cut a tiny little bit inside the lines and then that way again you do avoid that little um, gap that we have in between sometimes and if you didn't see how we created these you could be forgiven for thinking that these just came from a stamp set that we just stamped them normally and the leaves were meant to go behind those flowers all along so you can see here is the start of our card front now again I'll repeat that we don't need to add all of these elements to every single card however adding a shaker element even a small one can be a really cool idea to step up your card making now I recently shared a video where I just used um, recycled plastic bags here that worked really well to create a shaker element you can also of course use acetate or recycled packaging from stamp sets and things like that so just use whatever you have around the house 
And for me, this is just like a really easy technique using the plastic bag, um, but to each his own, whatever you are more comfortable with. I've just cut a little strip here and I'm actually going to use some normal just household sellotape and put it over the edges to cover up where I cut from. And then I'm going to create four little shaker elements that will go on my card. So at the moment it's kind of like one big long tube and I'm just going to cut it into four little pieces there. And then I will again use the same tape to cover up one of those sides. So I just end up having kind of four really tiny little bags. They've got one end open, which is where I'm going to put the um, shaker pieces in, obviously. And again, you can use whatever you want for shaker elements. It doesn't have to necessarily shake. You could just put a little bit of glitter in there, or you could just put some flat sequins or beads or like these ones that I'm going to use today. Now these are from Alina Crafts and they're kind of like a mustardy color maybe, they're kind of like a, a yellowish color, which is going to go really nicely for the center of my flowers. So I just tipped a little bit in, just a tiny bit, and then again I just use the tape to seal up the side and I have all my little shaker pouches ready to go. And they move really nice and freely and they still create that nice shaker sound, which is good too. So to create my little windows here, I just went through my stash and found a little die that would fit perfectly for the center of those flowers. Now, if you didn't want to do the shaker portion of this card, I would probably fill the center of those flowers with some little enamel dots, or you could use a little, um, some Nuvo drops to go on the center, or something like that would work really well. Now to pop down those little shaker elements on the back, I'm using some uh, roller tape here. This one is a permanent adhesive. Uh, you could definitely just use some double-sided tape, would work really well also. But all I'm going to do is pop a little bit around each of those holes and then just pop those little bags straight down. And they create that really nice shaking sound and the lots of movement within the card. It is a little bit hard here to catch on camera because they are admittedly a really small shaker portion. But I quite like doing this when you don't want the shaker element to kind of be the main thing in the card as well. It's a little bit kind of secondary and just a fun feature rather than being the main feature of a card. So next up, we are going to stamp out the sentiment. And this is a stamp set that I've used many, many times. I will link as many supplies as I can down below for you guys. Sometimes things are not available anymore or have been discontinued or things like that. So I know that that can be frustrating, but I really just encourage you to have a look around and kind of use what you have in your stash. And as I said, not having to use all of these elements that I'm showing today on every single card. So that's definitely an option. Now, if you do choose to use my links down below, they are affiliate links and I earn a really small commission off uh, those. I really, really appreciate it when you guys use them. It really helps me keep this channel going uh, with me producing these videos. And also, hit that subscribe button. I've been hearing a lot of people saying recently that they are not getting notifications anymore. So um, hit that little subscribe button down the bottom right-hand corner of your screen. And then also hit that little notification bell. And that should let you know when I release new videos. So whilst I've been talking here, I have stamped out my uh, sentiment. And I heat embossed it. So my fourth tip here is get clever with adhesive. Small details matter in card making and it's like the little things about buckling vellum and that don't kind of look nice and neat on your card. So you can see I've got all those tiny wee pieces there behind the letters and it is worth doing that to stop any of the buckling that we would otherwise get. Now here I'm just going to add a little bit of ribbon. I'm using some double-sided tape and then I'm also using the grid mat on my little um, Tim Holtz trimmer here just so that I can get it nice and even. So I'm just adding the double-sided tape across each one of the corners. And again, this is kind of almost a little tip within itself to add some embellishments because um, it can help cover up any little ink splotches or things that weren't meant to be there. So little embellishments can be our best friend for that. I'm just going to remove the release paper from the top of the double-sided tape and then add over some of this ribbon. And I'm not putting it all the way around, I'm just going to kind of tuck it over the corners there. I did decide to put the ribbon on before I stuck the sentiment down, just because I knew that I wanted the sentiment to go over top of all of these things. And I knew I wanted my sentiment to sit right in between those two kind of middle shaker flowers, so I didn't want to cover up any of my hard work there. I've taken off all those tiny little pieces 
that were behind my letters and as I said that reduces all of that kind of gaping and it just makes it look a little bit more professional when it comes to card making. So I am going to take off the release paper from the side bits now that it's all lined up and my sentiment is on. Now in the middle of my card I recently got this little old and new stamp set here. Now this is Say It With Love and this has so many uh, sayings for the insides of my cards. I've kind of decided to step it up recently a little bit with adding uh, things to the insides of my cards and I like this stamp set because it has all occasions. It has kind of sympathy ones, birthday ones, celebration ones, it has everything and uh, not just kind of one theme and so if I'm going to invest in a stamp set like this I really want to make sure that I have lots of themes covered. Tip number five is to add liquid glue to your foam tape. This is a game changer for me because when I have worked so hard on my card front and everything, I do not want it to all come apart at the last minute by lining up all of my layers wonky. And when I am using foam tape, that is something a little bit harder to do. Uh, when I'm just using double-sided tape, I do my little trick of pulling down the four corners. But adding liquid glue on top of your foam tape gives you the dimension and makes it easy to line up. Number six is Nuvo Drops. You guys know that I love my Nuvo Drops and not necessarily just the Nuvo brand. There are several brands out there that do these. These can be used in so many ways, which I will share in other videos. However, they just add a beautiful finishing touch. If I were to advise you to get just a few colors, I would say the black, the white, the gold, the silver, and there is a clear one called Morning Dew that dries absolutely clear. That is a fantastic start and will get you really far. I hope you have enjoyed these top six tips for budget friendly card making ideas to take your card making to the next level. Thank you so, so much for watching and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye.